You guys, Christmas is coming up so fast, and this is usually the time of year that I am wrapping up DIYing decor and jumping feet first into my DIY gifts for everybody on my list. Well, this year I am partnering with Hippo to create some awesome sublimation gifts for my family and friends. So today I'm gonna take you through all the steps from starting to convert a printer all the way through to the finished product, and let me tell you, it is so much easier than I thought it would be, so stay tuned. A huge thank you to Hippo for partnering with me on this video to help show you the process of sublimation. I've gotten questions from so many of you on how does it work, have I ever tried it, and up until recently the answer was no, I have no idea. But I wanted to bring you along so I could show you a true beginner friendly step by step. So let's get into it. Let's first let me show you what printer I am using and how I'm going to convert it from a regular printer to a sublimation printer. So the process of sublimation is when you take a specific kind of ink, print it on special paper, and then use heat to transfer it from the paper to the medium that you want it to be on. So to start that process, we need to get our special ink inside a printer. Now the biggest thing to know about sublimation is when you convert your printer, it is going to become 100% sublimation. You can't flip back and forth once the ink is in there. It is a sublimation printer. That's why the term is called converting. You also need a tank printer like you're seeing here where you put the ink manually into the tanks you can't use a cartridge printer because you aren't able to get the special kind of ink in there so to start the process i am using my handy dandy little instruction sheet to set up my printer as well as my hippo sublimation ink now hippo recently made an upgrade to their ink and it is so awesome so before you had to take syringes and take the ink out and like kind of get it to fit in there and from what i understand it was pretty messy. Well, now with these Epson Inco takes, it is this simple. You pop open the top and pop open the area where you would normally put your regular ink. But instead of putting the printer traditional ink, you're going to put in this special sublimation ink. You're going to follow along the black, yellow, magenta, and cyan, which are the colors here. You open each container and it's going to run you through the process. Epson is really good with their printer setup. And with these specific new bottles that Hippo came out with, you can fill it just like you're filling it with the Epson ink, which is so much easier, so much quicker, and a lot less messy. So I'm gonna open up my first tank and I'm gonna grab my bottle that matches. So you wanna make sure that the black colors match. And then I'm gonna open up the top and I'm gonna put my ink directly into that slot. You just push it a little bit, you don't need to squeeze it, and it will start filling up the tank. Once that's done, you're gonna remove your bottle and then you're going to go through the other three colors. That is it, it is so simple. It is just as easy as if you're setting up a regular tank printer. Now, if you're not using an Epson and these little bottles don't fit, you will have to go through the syringe method. But if you're looking for a new printer, I would recommend the Epsons. They are what I've seen the most people use and they come highly recommended. I have an Epson for photos that I absolutely love. When my ink was all ready, I just went through and followed the process of charging the ink and getting ready to print. Once that was done, I was ready to print with my sublimation paper and sublimation ink. So speaking of sublimation paper, you will need that, and I'm using hippos here. You will also need some heat tape for this process, which looks like this. You will also need a heat source. I am using a heat press with a mug attachment here. It also has attachments to do plates and hats, but I have seen people do sublimation with the Cricut mug press as well as the Cricut easy press. So that is another option. If you already own that, you can use those with your sublimation projects. And the last thing you need before we get started are some sublimation blanks. Here is a wide variety of what I will be using today. I also will be throwing in a couple Cricut blanks for infusible ink to see how they take the sublimation to show you along the way. The first project we're gonna do today are some ornaments. I absolutely love giving photo gifts, but they can be expensive. So I'm gonna show you how I made them at home and they look so stinking cute. So the first thing I'm gonna do with all my blanks I'm creating with today is measure it. And that is going to make sure that I design in the correct size and that I print it in the correct size. So these ornaments I'm using are just under three inches wide. So I'm gonna go into Canva and create a new design. You can do that up in the right hand corner, create a new design, and I'm gonna do three inches by three inches. 
That's going to give me a square to work with. And then I'm going to go over to elements on the side and get a frame. I decided to go a different route originally and the frame is where to go. So I'm going to take my circle frame and size it so it fills the entire square. And then I'm going to add my images. So for this example, I'm going to use this photo that we recently got taken of my parents and Finn so that we can create them an ornament for this Christmas. You can double click the image and crop it, make it bigger so it sits where you want it within the circle, similar to if you were using like a Snapfish or any other online design software. And then you're gonna go up to the right and click share and download it as an image. Then I know a lot of people use Cricut Design Space to mirror their image, but I'm gonna show you how to do it in Google Docs. I've found it's a lot easier, and also it helps save a lot of waste on the paper because you can use the whole sheet. So I'm gonna start a new blank document and then you can either insert the image you just saved via insert picture up here at the top or you can just navigate to it and drag the picture into your file like I'm doing here. Now I added three different pictures that I'm gonna do for ornaments and I just zoomed out a little bit so I could size everything. The first thing is to select your image and go up to image options here and I'm gonna resize to three inches wide. I'm gonna do that for all three of my images. That is so when it prints, it's three inches wide. I know it is the right size and I don't have to worry about that. Then I wanna make sure that there's ample space in between each of these. So to all of them, I'm gonna select the picture and I'm gonna get this little box underneath. I'm gonna select behind text as well as fixed position on page through this right drop down. That's gonna allow me to free move any of these on the sheet. I know they're still gonna be three inches wide, but then I could get a ton on this one sheet of paper, which is all great, I don't wanna waste. This is gonna be the same process for pretty much every project we're gonna to do today to get it to be the right size. Then for printing, you wanna make sure that you're set on your sublimation printer. So mine here is set. And then I'm gonna use my systems dialog box, which is all the way down at the bottom to make sure everything's set right. I'm using a Mac, so here are my settings. If you have a PC, there's a ton of tutorials out there on how to do it on a PC. I just don't have a PC to show you. First down here at the bottom, I'm going to go to layout and click flip horizontally. You're gonna to wanna to mirror everything that you do because we're essentially gonna heat press it on backwards. And I'll show you when we get to the heat press. Then you're gonna to go to print settings and select premium presentation paper matte because that is the suggested use and media type for the hippo paper. And then I'm also selecting high quality prints. After that, you're good to go, hit print, and it is gonna print out for you. When it comes time to print your designs, that's when you're gonna need your special sublimation paper. And when you get the hippo paper out of the box, there is going to be a more off-white peachy side and a bright white side. You're gonna to wanna to print on the bright white side. So I'm putting that up in my Epson printer, and then I'm hitting print to print out all of my ornaments. The first thing that worried me when I saw the printout is that the colors are gonna be really muted. Don't worry, that is how sublimation works. With the heat, it is going to transfer the color that you printed it. So I freaked out a little bit. I was like, I printed this wrong, I'm on some wrong setting. But once I got going, I realized it's just gonna look dull until you heat set it and then you're good to go. And I originally tried to cut around the outside of them really close and then it didn't give me any grip for my heat tape so i made it work for the ones that i cut out but i would definitely suggest doing what i did on the right hand side having multiple on one piece it will be fine with that excess also word to the wise make sure you remove the little plastic piece from your ornament i didn't do that on the first one and we had a little melty situation so you know everybody is a beginner sometime make sure that you check and take those off before you make your ornaments then i just used three pieces of heat tape you can use as many as you think you need to hold it down but i just did kind of like a peace sign motif some of them i just did too but if you're unsure of where your blank is lining up with the image you can just hold it up to the light and you can see kind of where everything is going to hit for all of my projects on this heat press i was between 375 and 400 that worked really well for everything 
Then when you're ready, you're gonna put your paper side up and put it on your heat press. It's also key that you add some butcher paper or some parchment paper over the top to protect it. I've also got parchment paper underneath on my mat. And once it's done, be careful because it's gonna be hot, obviously, but you can peel back your paper and reveal a beautiful ornament. I love these. I'm so excited to give them as gifts. If you've been following me for a while, my brother finally got to have his big wedding this summer, so I wanted to give them an ornament with one of their photos. The cute little baby is my little niece whose first Christmas it is, and I also put some stuff on the back of some of them. This one is for my parents because Finn calls them Papa and Gigi. Now a second option for ornaments is just opt to do text. I have a friend that recently suffered a miscarriage and she's been very public about it so I'm not letting anything out by doing this but I wanted to do just kind of a little act of kindness send her an ornament to let her know that I was thinking about her in kind of this rough time for the holidays. I went through Canva just selected some fonts that I liked and decided to type out this message but the process of exporting and flipping and sizing and printing is exactly the same. I did the same thing with this cute bluey image to make Finn one. And to make it double-sided, you just take your first one, press it, let it cool, and then flip it over like I did here, retape it and press it. That heat resistant tape won't do anything to the ornament and then you'll have a nice two-sided thing. This is great for characters that are hard to find, like they are here. I've got another Bluey DIY coming up later in the video that I did for Finn. Bluey is getting more popular, but it's harder to find stuff. And it's also nice to be able to customize and personalize things like I did here with the little baby name. The other great thing about sublimation is that it has become huge for side hustles. So many people are creating ornaments and mugs and just a variety of different things. The nice thing is it is super permanent because the sublimation ink goes right into whatever you are using, which is awesome for longevity, especially if you are selling a product. Now in that exact same vein, I had some of these Cricut coaster blanks just chilling in my stash, so I decided to make some coasters for my father-in-law. I went into Canva and made squares that were 3.75 by 3.75 inches. I added these cool clip art pictures of fish from Etsy. I also pulled down the transparency of this background image that was camouflage so the fish would pop. I printed those out, did my same process in Google Docs to print them out, and this is what I got. And then I opened my coasters and did the exact same process that I did with the ornaments. So putting the white side of the coaster onto the paper to line it up, use the light if you need to, and then use that heat resistant tape to get everything in the right spot so it's not gonna move on you. I got a little wiser on this project and left some more slack essentially on the outside so that I could tape it down. And then when everything was ready to go, I flipped it over so I was paper side up added my parchment paper and pressed at about 375 for 90 seconds. When that was done, I removed the paper once it cooled because I did not want to burn my fingers off. Please be careful. But once they were done, I peeled these off and they are so pretty. If you know my husband or his dad who these coasters are for, they are big into fishing. And so I had to get some freshwater ones like a muskie, a bass, a sunfish, and I also have the northern pike in there. So these are a really cool, fun way to do a personalized gift, but it isn't so like put your name on things. These are really fun for a guy's gift as well. Now I'm not gonna lie, I was so excited to do these gifts because I knew that that meant that I could make a t-shirt for myself. So this is another Cricut blank that I had in my stash. It's just a raglan tea and you want to make sure that you have at least probably 50 percent polyester so a 50 cotton poly blend in a t-shirt but anything 65 percent polyester and more is preferred i'm just going through giving it a quick press and then also removing any lint because that can impact the way that your transfer moves over and this transfer, I purchased the image off of Etsy, so no design work needed. I sized it so that it was about seven and a half inches wide because it's a longer design. And then I put it about three fingers length down from the collar. Before I got too far, I made sure to add some cardstock in between the 
two layers of the shirt so the ink didn't bleed through. And then I'm just using my heat resistant tape on the four sides to get it all set in the right spot. Now I'm the type of person that I mess with something about 62 times before I set it on a t-shirt just because I wanna make sure it's centered. Once I was ready to go, I did the same process, parchment paper over the top, pressed it at about 370 for 90 seconds. And when that was done, this turned out so awesome. It looks so pretty. I saw this file on TikTok and I knew I had to have a shirt like this. Look at how crisp the colors are. Like I cannot believe I printed that out from a printer and put it on a t-shirt, but I'm so excited to wear this for Christmas festivities. And it is seriously as easy as size it, print it and press it. I am loving sublimation. I use the same process as that t-shirt to make gift number five, which is this Bluey character blanket I made for Finn. Now I got all of these images from Bluey.tv. I found this last year when I did Finn's first birthday party themed Bluey. But if you scroll down and click characters, they have all of these files here. You can right click and save them or you can drag them to your desktop. And they are great high quality images of the characters on the show. I also did a Google image search for the Bluey logo so I could add that to the blanket. And then they all went in to Google images. I sized them between five and a half and six inches tall, depending on how tall the individual dog was. And then it was time to add it to this super soft plush polyester blanket. This is 100% polyester. It's a kid sized blanket. And I'm gonna press it with the same settings that I used for that t-shirt. So about 375 and I did about 90 seconds. Now the main thing here, because it's a plush blanket, is before I put anything down, I wanna take my hand and make sure that all the fibers are going in one direction, just so I don't get any funkiness happening with the ink. But then I press it, peel it up, and then I continue to move my blanket around, making sure I wasn't pressing in any new wrinkles, and I added all of my characters individually throughout the blanket. I'm sure there's probably a quicker way to do it, but I wanted to hand place my characters and it worked out just fine. It was a little bit tedious, but once I got through the process, I had this gorgeous bluey blanket and I know Finn is gonna absolutely love it. I've been enjoying making so many bluey things for him because here where I live, it is hard to find a lot of options for bluey and that's his favorite show. So sublimation has really helped me with gifts this year. <laughs> And for a fellow Christmas vacation lover, I decided to make these fun festive socks. These are just two sublimation blank socks. I'm taking some cardstock, cutting smaller pieces and putting them inside the socks so that the ink doesn't bleed. Now before I apply my designs, I'm doing a quick pre-press to get rid of any of those little wrinkles. And then I am cutting off the excess around my design so I can make sure I get it centered. And then I'm gonna do it so if you're looking at the person, you can read it instead of the person looking down. It's personal preference. Took my heat tape, stuck it down, add my parchment paper, press, press, and voila. I love these so much. I had to make two sets so that I could have one for myself. They are so fun. I will link these over on my blog, these design files, as well as any of the other ones I can share so you can recreate them. Number seven are these really fun cosmetic bags. My aunt who comes over to help watch Finn while I work and create content for you guys is a Mary Kay director. And so I've made some different things for her before, but I thought these would be really fun to do. So I measured and decided I needed it to be seven inches wide, my design by four inches tall. I designed them and then also stuffed my cosmetic bag with some cardstock for that bleeding issue again. Then the kicker here is that you follow all the processes that I'm doing before on all the other projects, but I decided to leave the zipper out on this one because I had originally pressed it and melted the zipper because you're pressing at high heat. <laughs> so if you put the zipper out of your press, you are good to go. I made some for myself. I did Peace, Love, and Mary Kay, Peace, Love, and DIY, and Canva had some really awesome imagery that looks just like the Mary Kay marketing. So I think she's absolutely going to love these and I can't wait to give them to her. 
One of the most popular things with sublimation you'll see are DIY mugs. And so I decided to try my hand at one for my friend's gift. So I have these 11 ounce mugs and the first thing I did was measure it so I could create a design template. So for the height of the mug, it's measuring about three and three quarter inches and about nine and a half or so around the outside. The outside doesn't matter as much, but that is just gonna give me an idea. So I'm gonna create a new design in Canva and put those measurements in. So the three and three quarters by nine inches or nine by three and three quarters if you look at it there. And then I am using these elements that I got from design bundles. So you can do families, you can do friends, you can do individual people, but they have so many different hair colors, men, women, they've got hats, they've got a ton of different things. So I just grabbed what looked like me and my friend Virginia so that I could kind of get what I was looking for. It was super easy to drag and drop and once I had what I wanted for us, then I found a quote that I thought embodied our friendship. I also searched for watercolor images to match the design. I just did that by going into elements and putting watercolor coffee or watercolor wine. I found these two and then I also searched for a watercolor like swatch or a brush stroke so I could put it behind the text so that it would pop. I didn't do anything specific on the spacing because I figured once I printed it out, if it wasn't where I wanted it, I could cut them apart and place them myself anyway, but this worked out pretty well. Now you're probably wondering, how are we gonna press a mug with a flat heat press? Well, this one comes with different attachments. So I am just going to unplug the big plate that works on the heat press that you've seen me use all video long. You just unplug that, twist in the adapter for the mug press. It's like plug in, plug out. And then I'm gonna set it to what the back of the packaging of the Hippo Sublimation Paper says. I have been choosing to add about 15 to 20 seconds just to make sure that everything is set and ready to go. Now I created two mugs. I made one for myself. That's a theme of this video, like one for you, one for me, but that's okay. I cut out the one for my friend. I tried to get rid of as much outside as I could. And then I wrapped it around to make sure it was gonna sit where I wanted it to. Indeed it did. So then I just took some of my heat resistant tape. I wrapped one through the handle and then did one more piece at the top and the bottom so that I could hold that piece of paper tight so that it would apply how I wanted it to. Once everything was all taped down and my mug press was hot, then I carefully took the handle and slid it in. Now be careful obviously, cause this is hot but I left the handle out and then I just took the other handle and kind of clamped it and set my timer for three minutes. Then when it is complete, you release the pressure, pull out your mug, the handle didn't get too hot. These are great for microwaving in as well. And then I took my heat tape off, peeled off the paper and revealed a really pretty mug that looked just how I wanted it to. I also added on the hip of each of the people our names and I can't wait to give it to Virginia. For gift number nine, I decided to do some fun personalized photo puzzles because you can sublimate on those blanks as well. I took a picture of both my brother and my sister-in-law as well as my cousin and his new wife Jade so that I could make sets for both of them. So I first went into Canva and created a template that was 12 inches by 11 inches, which is what the size of my puzzle was going to be. I cropped them so that it sat where I wanted within the puzzle. Then when I went to export, because it's gonna be larger than the sheet of paper that I can print on, which is eight and a half by 11, I'm gonna export as a PDF so I can print it out as a poster. Once you export out of Canva as a PDF, I just opened it in Acrobat Reader, and then you can go to print and the option right here is poster. That's gonna tile it on four sheets or more depending on how big you are doing, but I just decided to do a little bit bigger than that printer. And then down here at the bottom, click printer, and that's where you're gonna find your systems dialog box where you do the mirror and the paper. Then I had to do a little bit of puzzle work myself to kind of piece everything together. I used some scotch tape on the way, way outside, and don't worry, I'm gonna cut it before I press. Do not press on your scotch tape, but I just used it to help hold everything together on the front of my paper. And then when everything was kind of set where I wanted it, then I used heat 
resistant tape on the back because this is what we're going to press directly onto. So the heat tape is fine, just don't use scotch tape when you're going to press on it. Then I took out my little jigsaw puzzle blank, set it on top of my image, and used some tape to stick it down and then I cut out the excess. I made sure everything was set one more time, added my parchment paper, and then I pressed at 370 for about 90 seconds to create this beautiful photo jigsaw puzzle. I let it cool and peeled off the paper and it turned out so cute. As long as you make sure that all of your seams are covered and you don't have any white strips, you are able to do a full photo. Here is the one of Andrew and Jade. That one turned out really nicely as well. To finish them off, I just took two more of those cosmetic bags I used earlier and added the same photo as well as their name and their wedding date so that all of the puzzle pieces can go in there. I just broke them apart and threw them in the bag so that they know what picture they are going to be doing with their puzzle. I thought this was a unique gift and a fun way to remember their wedding day. Once I did the puzzles and realized I could do something bigger than the paper, I decided to make my mom this awesome pillow cover. Back in the spring, my brother and I for Mother's Day made her a bench for her house and she's wanted a custom pillow for there, so I figured why not now? I'm using a Cricut 18 by 18 pillow blank and I did the same process with the PDF. I just designed this in Canva. To get the pretty laurel wreath with eucalyptus, I just searched watercolor wreath and this popped up. I added a G and their last name and then placed it all together the same way I did the puzzles. Then here I'm just stuffing the inside with some cardstock, doing a pre-press really fast and then using some more heat tape to stick down the center print. Make sure you don't forget that parchment paper. Pressed it at 375 for about 90 seconds, lifted up my press and I had this gorgeous little pillow cover. I stuffed it and this is going to be a great addition to my mom's little bench. I went neutral so that she could use this year round. Another idea would then be to flip this over and do seasonal on the back, but what I absolutely love about doing the sublimation is that it is in the fibers of that pillow. Nothing is raised, you could put your head on it and you're going to be able to wash it easily, no problem. Thank you so much for watching and a huge thank you to Hippo again for partnering with me on this video. I had so much fun doing these sublimation gifts. I have so many ideas for decor past the holidays, so I'm sure this won't be the last you will see me doing sublimation. Thanks again for watching. Put any questions you got down in the comments and hit subscribe if you're new so you don't miss a future Whiskey and Whip video. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!